Welcome again to the Wind Downs, where we dissect each episode of Insecure. And here we are, almost at the end of season five and of the whole series. So today, Prentice and I are very excited to be with the talented Kendrick Samson. Hey! hey. Yeah. Who plays Nathan, and we are talking about episode nine. Crazy. Cheers. Cheers. We're here. Cheers. Oh, look in my eyes. <laughs> This episode was a lot. Yeah. It's like never a dull moment. So Kendrick, Nathan and Lauren start getting into it, obviously over some Texas versus LA barbecue. Uh, <laughs> what was the fight really about? I think the beef was obviously about Issa and insecurities. It was, you know, them having a little male ego thing back and forth about who has the stronger hold yeah. or who has the end say. It I like the little subtle digs. Man, yeah. it was very petty and you guys sold it. This is the first time where it's like two guys who know each other. It's like you just let them in the room together and it was like, you know, this is going to be And they've a never really been in the same room together, no. right? No. I mean, Nathan is no stranger to getting in squabbles, but this was different. People try Nathan he and does. I they think do. that's they the do. thing. And he does not like to back down. He feels something about his mental state about, yeah. you know, who he is and wants to defend that. This is one of the few times we're seeing Nathan in Issa's environment yeah. as her man, and they're taking yeah. this next step together. But at this party, Lawrence is just in the shadows yeah. in so many ways, and I think Nathan recognizes that and wants nothing more than to overcome that. Yep. And, you know, I think those frustrations have been, been building for a while, and he's confronted with them, so he takes action. Yeah. I can relate. In this episode, Issa and Nathan are reaching a big milestone in their relationship, right, where they're ready to move in together. Uh, by the end of the episode, obviously, their commitment is tested by Lawrence confessing his feelings for Issa. Do you feel Issa is still conflicted about that? There's some unresolved feelings about the choices she made, but yeah. I think that that's kind of natural with any decision that you make moving forward. Yeah. But I do think that she's sure about her feelings for Nathan. I don't think that there's a doubt about that. Didn't seem to me like she was super torn, yeah. but she was questioning, which is, I think, a, a super, a very natural thing. Yeah, but I do think there's a feeling for him that this guy continues to be in the shadows and exist. So I think it's tough when you're like, I'm trying to establish new history with you, but this other history kind of yeah. keeps coming along. Sorry, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> kind of keeps rearing his head. Why does he keep popping up? Why does his name keep popping up? And why is he here? Yeah. Like, I'm already out of my element and in yours. We ain't, I don't, I ain't want to go that deep into your right. element, right? <laughs> like, yeah. bringing in your past and making me feel like I got something to prove. Bridges, you wrote and directed this episode, and being on set, it felt like a reunion. Man People Love to Hate made a comeback, Dro. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we kind of paired him again with Molly, who's, we've set up as entering this new relationship yeah. with Torian. Why did we decide to bring back Dro? <laughs> what, <laughs> what do we think? We learn new about Molly's growth. The one thing we always said about Joe and Molly's relationship is that they grew up as friends. They yeah. say that like we were friends at the end of the day. And so even though we made this choice that maybe we shouldn't have gotten in bed together, I've known you since I was a little kid. And that trumps kind of everything. And I think what we tried to show with obviously Torian is that none of that really matters to him. And I think that's what we were trying to show in their relationship is that he's not hung up on certain things that maybe other men that she's dated might have been more hung up on. It was like, yeah, it's all good. Like, we all have a past, blah, blah, blah. And I think within the closet, it was just Molly being like, here it is. You know yeah. what I mean? And I'm being vulnerable. I'm being like, I'm afraid you're going to, like, if I show you this, you're going to leave and blah, blah, blah. And to me, it's a real moment of Molly's growth of just being like, here's what I'm really afraid of. When it comes to matters of the heart, should you always listen to your mind or should you do what your heart tells you? It's a spiritual thing for me. Your mind and your heart can fool you sometimes and lead you in the wrong direction. Fair. So I try to seek a, a higher guidance mm. um, and then see if they align. It's always that balance, right? Which is like, what, what are you feeling, right? But your feelings can lie to you, right? And feelings can change. So I agree with you. That's like finding something I think spiritual in a way that like can be a more of a North Star than being too logical or too emotional. Exactly. Yeah. You cannot miss next week where we sadly say goodbye to Issa, Molly, and the gang. So Ooh. we will see you all then. Cheers. All right, cheers, y'all. One more episode to go. One more. Woo! Y'all didn't look at okay. me. Look at me. <laughs>